Hey, so hello everyone, I'm Gavin.js, and last time we made the platonic solids and geometry nodes, and I mentioned making some procedural UVs for them. So I thought it would be fun to just go ahead and do that today, so let's jump into geometry nodes and get started. Okay, so picking up where we left off last time, we we'll want to start by adding a split edges node. That'll just make it so that each of our faces are separated, and we can use that to then lay them out flat. So to do that, let's pull in an edge angle node along with a UV unwrap node. Let's pull our unsigned angle into seam. And then if we add in a set position node, drag our geometry into geometry and our UV into position, we'll see that it gets nice and flattened out in the one by one space on our XY plane. That's exactly what we want because that's exactly how the UV space works. So now what we can do is add a capture attribute node switch our value from float to vector, and then point to face corner. Now we can take our split geometry, drag that into geometry, and our UV, and drag that into value. Then if we take the geometry from our capture node, we can see in the 3D viewport that we've now got our cube back, and then we can take our attribute, drag that into the second input of our output node, and then over here in the group panel, under outputs, you can rename the attribute to whatever you want. I'm going to rename it to UV map 2 because we can't use the original UV map. So let's not get it confused with that since that data still exists. We just can't use it in geometry nodes. And then this is very critical here under, what does this say? Attribute domain. We want to change that from point to face corner. And the reason why, and this tripped me up for a good while, if we pull up our spreadsheet here, we can see we have all of these different vertices. We have 24 because our geometry is currently split up a bunch. And now we also have 24 face corners. So if we drop in a merge by distance node, we'll see that our vertices drop down to eight, but we still have those 24 face corners. We don't need to get into the technical details of all of that today. It's just really important that the data from our captured attribute gets put into face corners instead of vertices because if it gets put into vertices, it all of our UVs will get messed up and it will completely defeat the purpose of what we're doing here. So all of that said, I can show you what I'm talking about if we drop in a set material node and change our viewport over to material preview and then go into shader editor. Here I've made just a very simple material We've got an attribute node with UV2 in there, which if we drop down our output attributes, that's what we'll want to name the attribute. And this is important. This string that you type in here needs to match the string that you type into the name of the attribute in the shader. Otherwise, it won't know what you're talking about. UV map 2 is just the label to make everything human friendly, <laughs> to give it something that we can recognize. But UV2, the value in here and the value in here need to be the same. That's what the computer is looking for. Anyway, we've got that vector going into this test PNG that I have set up. That's just a placeholder texture right now with numbers for each face. And then simple principled BSDF. This is all good. And the only reason we're not seeing anything change in the 3D viewport is because I forgot to select our material. And now we can see all of those numbers showing up exactly where we want them. There's no weird stretching or anything. And if you do see stretching, check your attribute domain. Check that your captured attribute is going to the face corner domain. Take a look at your spreadsheet. It took me a while to get that all sorted out. So I want to save you that headache. But in essence, that's it. I'm going to add a few more nodes just to clean this up and give us more control over our UVs. But this is the basic basic setup but I think it's really handy to be able to switch between looking at our flattened UVs and our actual geometry so I'm going to add in a switch node pull our split geometry into false and our set position into true then if we scoot things around just a little bit give ourselves a little bit of breathing room we can take the output of our switch and put that into the capture attribute node so now if we toggle this, we can toggle between looking at our UVs and looking at our geometry, which is super useful given that we don't have access to the default UV space. So when we pull up the UV editor, 
nothing that we've set in geometry nodes is visible. So I think it's really important to have this tool, to have this switch, to be able to switch between viewing them so that when you go to do anything else, you can understand how the geometry is being manipulated and you can see what's happening with your UVs. Another thing that would be really handy to have is the ability to adjust the margin of our UVs. So if we take this value and drag it up, we'll see that the space between our UV islands is changing. It's also changing how it's reading which number is where, which I've not encountered before. I might have to come back to this and address that at another point. Right now, it's not a big deal because we're not doing anything crazy with our UVs. And when we do go to do something more complicated, I'll have to figure out new things. And I'll show you that when we get to all of that. But for now, this is fine. Just be aware that our numbers are switching around as we change the margin value. It's not a big deal, but just be aware. Anyway, it'd be really nice to have a value that we can use to modify our margin. So let's take our group input. And with this second input, let's wire that into margin. And then let's duplicate our group input, bring it over here just so that it's a little easier to read and take our switch Boolean and wire that in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and rename these real quick so that everything reads a little bit better. So we've got our UV margin and UV toggle. I'm just going to hide those values here so that things are a little cleaner and start cleaning this up sort of in general. And then over here at set material, let's take our material and wire that into our input as well so that we have access to that outside of this node group. And then one last thing I'd like to do is to add in a set shade smooth node. So let's wire that into our geometry, untoggle our UVs, and now we can see the shading on our cube is set to smooth. It doesn't look great given that we don't have any edge loops or anything to really control our shading. But if we add a bevel modifier, and I'm not really sure why things are getting a little weird at the bevel, but I've found that if you increase the segments to two, it completely disappears. And let's go ahead and reduce the amount to something like 0.025. I found that gave a very nice crisp edge and already that's looking really good. You get some nice shading on there and you've got a nice little dice. So let's just add our shade smooth to our group input, clean that up a little bit more. And there you go. There's our procedural UVs for our basic platonic solids. It's fairly straightforward. There are a few kinks to work out there. And of course we'll have to revisit this if we want to do anything more complicated with our solids, which is inevitably going to be the goal. But for now, that's everything I wanted to touch on. Next time I'd like to take a look at truncations so that we can get different variations of our solids and have more complicated geometry that we can use for interesting abstract art later on down the line. But for now, that is all. So thank you all for watching. If you've stuck around this far, I'd really appreciate you doing the YouTube things, liking, subscribing, leave a comment letting me know how this could be better if this has worked for you. So let me know if you found this interesting or helpful. But anyway, thank you all for watching and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye.